Good morning, everybody from Washington, D.C. I know you are all over the world, and this is amazing that we can do something like this. You know, technology is something so cool that allows us to connect, uh, you know, with everybody, with all of you from wherever you are in the world, with Claude, she's in New York, and we're going to be having an amazing conversation today about building strong organizational culture with my friend and the awesome, big-hearted Claude Silver, the chief heart officer at VaynerMedia. And Claude and I were talking a little bit offline about how today or this week is the 50th anniversary of uh, uh, the landing of Apollo 11 on the moon. And, you know, I had this dream of being an astronaut uh, when I was a teenager, so I couldn't do that. But I'm, I'm, I'm having a great time doing, doing this. So thank you, everybody, for joining. We're going to have the great, great time over, uh, over the day. We have several presentations, several panels talking about leadership, diversity, uh, employee experience, uh, culture, and of course, our keynote session today, uh, this morning with uh, Claude Silver. So Claude, thank you so much for joining us today. I, I welcome you with the a big heart as well, and the online stage is all yours. Thank you, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon, wherever you are. Enrique, thank you so much for having me today. It's an honor to be here. It's actually my first LinkedIn Live, so uh, a great day to kick it off, being that it is the uh, 15th anniversary of Apollo launching. So um, I'm here to talk about bringing humanity back into the workplace. Uh, I work at a place called VaynerMedia. Many of you probably know it or know my boss, Gary Vaynerchuk. So without, uh, without uh, saying anything else, I'm going to go into this presentation and I believe you're going to be able to see half of the presentation and half of me. So here we go. Volume on. Claude, I believe your presentation is muted, uh, the video. Hmm. Okay. I don't know if you want to play back with it with yeah, the sound. Gonna, yeah. yeah, I wonder yeah. where the sound is. Let me um sorry everyone. Huh. Um I'll just go like this. Let's see if this works. Is that better? No, it's not coming out. All right. Well, we're missing Gary's voice. So uh, let's go on. Let's move on. I think what we'll uh, what we'll talk about here is um, I work for this guy. Let's get off of his screen for a second. His his, uh, his face. Um, Gary Vaynerchuk. Uh, we're two sides of the same coin. We are uh, chalk and cheese in many ways, but we have an incredible belief in human beings and in what's possible for humans and setting people up to thrive. And so in that video, and you'll see it online as as uh, the day goes on. Um, he is introducing me and, and why I have the honor of being Chief Heart Officer at VaynerMedia and the autonomy that he's given me to set the culture um, and basically scale him and, and, and do things and approve things and have the autonomy to, uh, to move things in any, any which way I, I want that is most of the time based on heart rather than based on paper economics. So you'll see that in a little bit. Um, I, I know the audience out there and I know that these are the things that you care about uh, because you're incredible leaders. And uh, I'm going to just go into this, this presentation by talking about purpose. And um, I, I love this quote by Joseph Piotrowski. It reminds me of Viktor Frankl in many, many ways, which is we're always looking for something greater than ourselves to live for, something that will give us purpose in life and help us find meaning outside of ourselves. What I do believe is that every single one of us, especially those of us that are in the people world and in HR, have this untapped wealth of, of energy and passion and love and desire to help people that is really waiting inside of us. It's just waiting for us to launch it, if you will. And I believe that in these, in these roles of HR, we, we have 
this gift of helping people, coaching people, being their Sherpas and helping them unlock themselves and identify roadblocks and, and move past them and identify learning opportunities and move past them and identify where it is they want to go and help them find their journey. So for me, my purpose and, and really the reason that uh, it works for me to be chief heart officer at VaynerMedia is I, I've been in the working world for three decades at this point. I've been in advertising agencies for 20 years. Um, it's a place that I found comfort in for some odd reason way back in 1998. And I am a believer in people and I really just want to see people get from point A to point Z, um, understanding that we all have hurdles in life and understanding that through connection with each other and through sharing and trust, we can really find ways to um, to make our workplaces a heck of a lot more human. So for me, my purpose is really to bring the heart and humanity back into the workplace and create these places where I, I absolutely know we can find a way to meld our work and our life today. So again, you know my boss, Gary, <clears throat> excuse me, and instead of being able to hear his voice, here are just a couple of uh, posts that he's done on Instagram in the last couple of years. Um, as you see, he is extremely in your face, as you know that, but his, um, his message is very real, and my message is very real, and the way we go about this is, is quite different. However, our reason for being is very much the same, and that is really, again, to provide more positivity and to bring people uh, into, a, into a space of uh, kindness, and growth, and collaboration and curiosity within the walls of VaynerMedia. So people always say, so why chief heart officer? And why do you call yourself that? And, and what is chief heart officer? And, and why did you guys name it that? Um, so I had never been in HR, as, as uh, I've been pretty vocal about. I had always been um, on the client-facing version of a advertising agencies and a strategist. And, and it was just very obvious to me that we were treating people at work Treating, I was being treated the same way as kind of cogs in a wheel and apples and apples and apples rather than really understanding our uniqueness as human beings. And so it made sense to me when Gary and I decided on uh, creating this role that we would concentrate on each and every human being. And we all have hearts at the center of who we are as humans. And it made kind of perfect parallel sense that humans are also at the center of the culture of any kind of organization. So chief heart officer for me is really having my finger on the pulse of each and every human being in the organization. So when I met with Gary and we went through this role three and a half years ago, he said a couple things to me. Number one, we want to build the greatest single human organization in the history of time. And he's been very public about that desire of his. Uh, I definitely was raising my hand and I wanted to be on board with that. I had already been at VaynerMedia for 18 months. So this was a, a given. I, yes, put me in coach. And then I asked him how I would be successful. Like, okay, this is great. Yes. But how do we know if I'm successful? And, and his message to me that day was, I, I want you to infuse empathy throughout the entire agency and, and touch impact each and every single employee. And so I had to figure out how to do that pretty quickly because uh, I was moving into a role where there were a lot of, um, a lot of needs and a lot of desires. And we, we had kind of a limited amount of time, I think, about, in my eyes, about six months to really make, a, make an impact pretty quickly. And so I decided that I would, I would concentrate on the macro, the mission, rather than the micro of how to get through the mission, the climb. Sometimes I say concentrating on the well, not the faucet. And in, in doing that, it allowed me to look at uh, the, the culture and the vibe and who we were and our values at a very, very large scale, rather than focusing in on the little minutia of the aches and pains every day, because those aches and pains every day, as we know, are always going to be there. And so I, I say that what we did is we really leaned in on EQ, emotional intelligence, rather than IQ. And, and that's very unintuitive sometimes. And so I, I say, you know, rock climbing without the ropes, kind of doing it unintuitively, almost doing it backwards, because of course, when you go rock climbing, unless you're a pro, an expert, you would take ropes with you. 
And most of the time, I think that we're trying to think our way, use our brains to find answers of how to uh, elaborate and, and cultivate a place where people can really thrive when I believe it really comes straight from the human being and what it is, what's going on with them. So um, what we do know is if you think back in time, in the, in the past, jobs were really all about physicality. You really needed to muscle your way through it, whether or not that was uh, you were making uh, horseshoes or you were putting things, uh, uh, tires on cars, you really needed muscles. And, and we moved into the information age and, and we're still there in many ways and, and you need brains. You really do need to be smart and you need to be fast. I need to be willing to kind of put it all out there. But I really truly believe that we are now moving into this age of heart and into this age of, of intuition and um, and life skills, necessary life skills. And, and tomorrow's really here. I think that none of us can deny what we're seeing on, um, uh, on Forbes or on Inc. or even on LinkedIn. And what we're talking about every single day is, is bringing much more human into the workplace. We are wired to connect. This is a given. We're wired to belong. We've been wired to connect with each other in community since the dawn of time. And so we look at our workplaces as places of connection, not places of disconnection or unconnection. We want people to find ways to see one another in themselves and see each other as part of the macro, as part of themselves, as part of the community. And so at VaynerMedia, we really, really lean in on the fact that people, uniqueness of people and the connection of cohorts and the relationships they're building is really what matters. Of course, the skills matter. Of course, we want to make sure that we can code and we can place Facebook ads and we can create amazing uh, uh, videos for Budweiser or Chase or any of our larger accounts. But skills are really a dime a dozen. Connection and heart and making sure that people are finding relationships with one another is really what we lean in on. And again, that's much more of the EQ rather than the IQ. And connection and these, these signals of connection is really where we open up our, our, our minds and our hearts to belonging. And signals of connection, another way to say that is ritual. And, and many teens and many families and religions, they all have ritual. In fact, Serena Williams bounces the ball three times before every uh, first serve. And then she bounces the ball two times before every second serve. So she's doing ritual just like we're doing ritual every single day. And the most common ritual we do at work is we shake hands. And in that handshake every single day, what we're saying to people, if we really are truly present is, I'm here with you. For this moment, you got me, I got you, I'm present. You can be trusted, I can be trusted, you're safe. And these are things I try to lean in on in, in small little cohorts and then larger, larger groups, which is ways to bring People, uh, people's awareness to how they're obviously connecting every single day. So we know that culture is absolutely invisible to the eye. It's not red, it's not blue, it's not gray, but it exists in the hearts and minds of every single person that is a part of that uh, organization, whether or not they are cynics or they are the most positive people. And so it's our job to really, our job as leaders to help cultivate that culture and help people start to define, describe, give it a texture, and, and play within it. And creating a culture of belonging and bravery really, really begins with each person bringing their full self or their best self to work. I, I often say full self or whole self, but I've been starting to say best self recently because I recognize that not everyone is going to want to bring the fact that they uh, they're a clown on the weekends, or they do magic tricks on the weekends, whatever. Not everyone's going to want to bring their entire self. But what we want is to create a place where people feel psychologically and physically safe to come in and just bring it. And that's what I'm talking about every single day. That's what the first thing on my mind every day. And that really, truly believe, uh, uh, means that we have to be thinking about diversity 24-7. And really... I, I almost want to get away from this idea of thinking about diversity because we just need to be diverse, just, just as though we need to breathe oxygen. And Brene Brown uh, says that true belonging doesn't require you to change who you are to fit in. 
It only requires you to be who you are. And I love this quote because it means that we can, we can create a minestrone soup with every single unique human being. We don't need people to all be the apples and apples and apples to fit in. We just don't anymore. We want people to be whomever they are. And that adds to the flavor of our culture. We know the things that weaken a heart-based culture, weaken any culture, cynicism, negativity, fear, humiliation, toxicity. And we know the things that promote great culture, autonomy, accountability, growth, possibility, inclusivity, a we not I type of culture. And these are things that are just known. I think everyone on this uh, platform knows what we're doing. Everyone's doing the same thing. And there are a lot of emotional needs in the workplace, especially around uh, millennials right now. Make me proud of where I work. Don't micromanage me. Invest in me. Coach me. Give me frequent feedback. Recognition is absolutely key. And these are things in the one-on-ones that I have every single day, I'm hearing loudly over and over and over again. And my job as I'm listening to people in one-on-ones is to be collecting data and looking for patterns, looking for patterns of what's working, but of course, listening for things that aren't working. I'm not getting honest feedback. I am being micromanaged. I don't get any recognition. And once I see these patterns and can really you know, see them in clarity, I can then make changes. I can then go to the managers and say, I think we need to do feedback training. I can then go to our chief creative officers and say, you know what, I think we have too many copywriters on that account, so forth and so on. But it requires listening to people. And I found, as you have found as well, that when you ask the right questions, people will share. The things that we really lean in on are are, are, are helping people find a place of belonging, as I've said already, identifying with people their own purpose, whether or not that is to work on a Fortune 10 brand, whether or not that is to write a tweet that they're proud of or take work home to their parents that they're proud of, that they're achieving something and they're satisfied, they're fulfilled with what they're doing. And of course, that they're sweating, they're putting in some sweat equity and they're, they're working hard. Whatever it is that, that, that they're doing every single day, they're squeezing that orange as hard as they can. The way you see people is the way you treat them. This is extremely important. And the way you treat them is what they become. We as humans have so much power in influencing people. And so why not walk into work every single day and inspire others to walk into work every single day and see people as magnificent, see people as doing their best, see people as incredible teammates rather than the alternative. Remember, we have so much power to infuse and inspire people. And let's give each other attention and let's give each other generosity. And that's what I think we as HR professionals do as coaches and as Sherpas. Remembering that when you give someone attention, it really makes them feel good and it unlocks that incredible feeling of serotonin. Generosity, of course, which is even a more pure form, I believe, of attention, unlocks oxytocin, that feel good, that hugging, that hugging vibe and drug that we're all craving every single day. The way that I put teams together in these last minutes are really helping people find tr- uh, connection, trust, and empathy with one another, which takes a while, which builds, of course, then accountability, resilience, and longevity. And these things really create teams that are rooted in purpose and similar values, and they're built for speed because that's really our KPI today. And again, we want to build the single greatest human organization of all time. And these are some tidbits on a very large scale of how we do this every single day. So thank you so much for your time. It's been great. I hope you have an incredible day at the uh, on LinkedIn Live here with Enrique. Thank you.